Hi there, welcome to this video where I'm joined by Christopher Cavallio. Hi there. And we're going to talk about some tips about releasing an album. Indeed. So I'm actually in the process of releasing an album right now, and I thought I'd record this Zoom call so other people at home can learn from some of the tips that Christopher's going to share in this video. So Christopher, so you've got your album done, all the masters are done, sounding pretty good, or at least you think it sounds pretty good. What do you do? Do you sign up to CD Baby, Distro Kids? Where's the best place to actually uh, get your music distributed? Yeah, sure. So one of those, for sure. Um, they all offer the same, similar services. Um, it's just a matter of different kinds of pricing. So definitely look into you know CD Baby, TuneCore, and, uh, and Distro Kids for getting your getting your recordings out there. Um, but yeah, as you know, that's not the uh you know that's just one piece of the album release puzzle right yeah i chose cd baby personally just because it's a one-off fee and uh the last time i used cd baby i believe it was like 50 dollars or around that around that price for the standard release now it's down to uh, five dollars so the price has reduced so much which is pretty awesome yeah it's a very competitive market I remember talking to you uh they did have like the the more premium option as well which was a bit more expensive but I didn't really. I wasn't too sure about what that was about. Is that if you sign up to PRS and they would collect the uh, the royalties from that? Yeah. So good question. Um, so what some of the distributors are are offering is uh, publishing administration to add to the kind of package, um, because uh, you know through standard distribution you you put out your sound recordings, and uh, you know those being your your WAV masters or what have you right um and through that same portal you will collect royalties from the recording side of things right so whenever the song is streamed or the album is purchased um you know quite a bit of that money goes to the recording rights holder which is you and or your label right um but that activity the streaming and the, the downloading and that sort of thing that also generates royalties on the publishing side of the business, right? So, um, you as the songwriter, right? So before I refer to you as the artist, now I'm referring to you as the songwriter, uh, you're also owed royalties, performance royalties and mechanical royalties from, from those activities as well. But that's a completely separate part of the music business and it goes through a complete different flow. Um, Spotify and the other digital service providers, they pay licenses to um, the performing rights organizations such as PRS in the UK, ASCAP, BMI, CSAC, et cetera, in, in the United States. And, um, you know, and that takes care of performance royalties and that sort of thing. But there's also mechanical royalties. There's the, um, the, the, the now MLC uh, in the United States, which handles mechanicals as MCPS in in the UK, which handle mechanicals as well. Um, but if you just do standard distribution, you're only getting the recording uh, pie, part of the pie. Um, in order to collect all of your publishing, you're going to need to sign up with at least one entity uh, in order to do that. Um, and publishing administration services, such as the ones that the, the distributors are offering as like a value add, as well as song trust and what have you, those are meant to be like, um, they are kind of, you know, they are apps that allow you to, you know, manage the entire publishing side of the business. It will affiliate with performance rights organizations and that sort of thing to make sure that you're getting everything on that side of the pie. So that will collect money from radio plays and live performance. Right. And all that, all, right. the, other, all exactly. the other things that isn't just streaming on sites like Spotify. Exactly, yeah. Any public usage of your music, of your songs, right? Um, uh, you know, even down to someone performing your song with a guitar in a pub, that's a performance royalty owed. Okay. The only problem with that is it's not free to join PRS. Um, so when do you think it's worth signing up for PRS compared to, say, if you release an album and it's not that popular, is it really worth signing up for PRS? Or, or do you have to hit a certain point or a certain threshold where you think, okay, um, I'm, I should be making enough money now, it's worth signing up for PRS? Right. 
Well, it doesn't cost you anything to manage your work. So, so one thing that I do, I do, um, I do advise is people to manage their own works. And, and what I mean by that is on a really simple level, have a spreadsheet of every song of every track, every ISRC, every ISRC, every ISWC, which are identifiers for respectively recordings and works. But in order to collect performance royalties and that sort of thing, yeah, you'll need to sign up with a performance rights organization, such as the PRS in the UK. Last time I checked, that is a one-off £100 fee. Um, but I think, um, don't they even have a piece, there's uh, some writing on their website about when is you know a good time to do it. Because obviously, I, I, you know, for some people, it'll be like, well, when am I going to make that money back or whatever? But, you know, and, and and I get that. It isn't necessarily something you have to do out the gate. It's not like, you know, you'll be missing money from the release date immediately. Um, you know, that that can be paid out to you retrospectively if you, if you don't, as long as you don't leave it too long um, after the fact. But um, yeah, I mean, at some point you're going to want, to manage your publishing at some point. Um, and you can use the services of the distributors. In the UK, um, if you do sign up to one of these, you know, publishing administration services, either through companies like CD Baby or TuneCore, or you go to you go directly to a publishing administration company like SongTrust, um, they it will have to still connect to your PRS account anyway. If that makes sense, yeah, yeah. Because uh, it, it basically in the UK, all performance royalties and that sort of thing, they it all has to, pretty much, it all has to funnel through PRS anyway. So if you sign up to one of these, it it there's a process that connects to your PRS account. Yeah. So let's say you release your album. It's now on all the streaming sites. I know I've asked this many times before, but. <laughs> How do you get people to listen to your songs? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um well, you need to get people to care, right? That you that you've bothered to release music. Um how do you do that? Well, if you're releasing an album, I would argue that there's a reason you're releasing an album, right? Um it's not always the case that you're just releasing a collection of songs because you feel like it. There's a reason. There's a story, right? Now, before you release an album, uh, my advice is to figure that out, right? Because to get people to, to care about the album, uh, you're going to need to do some marketing. Um, and the story behind the album is the marketing of the album. Okay. So one thing that I get artists to do, I get them to do this quite early on when I'm talking to them, actually, is I'm like, hey, good to chat. Next time we talk, uh, but between now and the next time we talk, I want you to open a notepad, whatever, and write down the whole story, everything that led you to this moment, to, to why we're releasing this, right? And they do that. It's like a brain dump that they either do it in an email to me or Google Doc, or I've had screenshots of pieces of paper before. Um, and, and I'm like, cool. Now we have some marketing collateral. Let's... Let's chop this up into chapters. Let's divide it up into you know a set of uh, a body of work, and we could start rolling that out and start telling the story as the um, campaign for the album. The story is the campaign, right? If that makes sense. If you're releasing an album, it's like releasing a book, right? And to promote that book, you you start telling the story of the book. You start unfolding it, right? If that makes sense. Um, when it comes to albums, what I really like people doing is um, because an album's a product, it's a proper body of work, right? Um, so in order to sell that effectively, you're going to need to do it directly. So what I advise artists to do is um, like get on MailChimp, set up a landing page, tell the story about the album on the landing page, make it look good, don't miss a beat, you know, sign up to my debut album or, or whatever it is, right? Um, and start telling the start telling the story online and offline. But the call to action is don't miss a beat. Sign up to my mailing list, right? 
or get the pre-order or what have or whatever it is. So be, because in doing that, not only are you gonna, you know, it's not just to sell the album on the release date, but it's also the fact that by the time release date um comes, you have collected email addresses at least from your audience and you've started to to kick off a campaign which can then um, be repurposed maybe into a Patreon or something like that after the fact. And that's the ongoing campaign, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So do you think it's worth directing people to Spotify or YouTube Music or maybe even Bandcamp where you can kind of directly sell the album? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, after, after, after that. It's a lot easier to send people to somewhere and when you've got their email address and when you're directly doing it because that can also be in the welcome email right so when they sign up they're signing up because they're excited right they're signing up because they don't they don't want to miss out on this right um so they're signing up and then a, a welcome email gets triggered standard email marketing stuff email marketing maybe in the uh, welcome email there's a little bit more story okay you're starting to tell the second chapter or whatever it is yeah and then so i'm really excited um, to deliver this to you. In the meantime, check out my Spotify, check out my Bandcamp, check out my YouTube, etc. All of this is in the welcome email. So at the so at the beginning of the journey, your your job is and the call to action is to get email subscribers, and then the email marketing does the work. If that makes sense. Um, when it comes to like Bandcamp and stuff like that, what what I've done before with artists, and what I do like, I do I do quite like doing this, but. Um, is like launch the Bandcamp special maybe before the streaming release, maybe one or two weeks before. It's it's an option. Um, and what I really like people to do is just add a bit of value to that Bandcamp release, whether it's like PDF liner notes or whether it's like an, a bonus track or two, make it the premium version of the release. Um, because, you know, there are people do buy music, actually. Like some people do buy music. It's, it's actually quite a big... The, the market of buying music is actually quite big, right? Not as big as it used to be, but it's, it is something. Um, I mean, Bandcamp alone have paid out over a billion dollars to to artists, right? And I think 100 million or 200 million in the last year. So there's definitely a market. So for the, for the fraction of the people who will want to buy your album, this is how you can make that available to them. Yeah, the good thing about that as well as on Bandcamp or soundcloud as well you can instantly put the music up there if you upload it to cd baby for example they have to uh, review your music and then you have to wait for it to go on all the different different sites which can take a few weeks so you could do as you said like an early release on Bandcamp, whilst it's processing or going on the other sites yeah sure sure absolutely and that's like you know from from the point on once it's out on streaming platforms it's out and mm -hmm. you know and and, every, and people have forever to discover it and and that's fine but for me that's kind of like you know it's the end and the beginning at the same time um but the by the time you get to the release date at least of the out of the bandcamp version for example most of you, most you, sh you probably have derived most of the value already because you collected those email addresses, and that's an asset, you know, for you and your music going forward. And then you can all, always uh, promote gigs or merchandise as well. Hundred percent, yeah. So you could do like, um, you know, as you do this kind of staged, you know, series of events over the campaign, you might do a merch drop, like after the fact as well, maybe a couple of weeks. Um, it's it's always good to keep feeding the funnel afterwards, right? So you, even after the album is fully out, you could drop a music video of track three two weeks after that, and then another one of track seven another two weeks after that, and everything points in the same direction. You're just feeding the funnel over time because, you know, I think it's quite easy for people to get trapped in thinking that uh, the success of the release is determined in one or two weeks, but because of the on-demand nature of streaming and digital nowadays, people do have forever to discover it. So it's never over. The campaign is always on. So what do you recommend um, as a music video? Yeah, I mean, well, that's very, you know, that's definitely more okay, of an uh, artistic thing. For a low-budget music video. Low-budget, yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Um 
I mean, like, a low-budget music video? I don't know. I mean, I might put the question back to you on this one because, like, if there's a story, right, what's the cheapest, most effective way to tell the story, right? Because a good music video doesn't have to be expensive, obviously. You know, just in the same way that, like, you don't need, you know, a big commercial studio to make a hit, right? It's, that's art, isn't it? You know, um, but uh, yeah, I might put that one back to you, actually. <laughs> My main bit of advice is film everything in uh, double frames per second so you can slow it down. So film everything um, so, you, so it can be slow motion. If you watch almost any professional yeah. music video, everything's at half speed or even quarter speed. So for some reason, when you put something in slow motion, it just looks more professional in the music video. <laughs> so I always, yeah. uh, what I'm doing at the moment, because I film, obviously, the YouTube videos and tutorials and stuff like that, I've got all the camera equipment. So I, I bought a, a gimbal, and I just go around and film scenery outside. So it's yeah. an excuse to film. If I go on holiday, if I go on a trip or a day trip, I'll take my camera and gimbal, and I just film some footage. And my, my music's instrumental. This album's instrumental anyway. And it kind of fits the mood of this kind of, um, sure. kind of slow electronic music so uh, yeah for me it's kind of use what I've already got and uh, yeah just film what yeah. I'm kind of doing anyway I mean I'm, I remember like you know those music videos that were made in lieu of of an idea right where it's just shots of the bands that they've obviously accumulated over time and spliced into something and sometimes it's quite good like it fits it serves its purpose or what or what have you. But I feel like, you know, in the north in the nineties and noughties, we watched loads of mm. videos on MTV that were just shots of the band or whatever. But the good thing about this is you probably have that content on your phone. Yeah. Yeah. Already. Like you've because we all make content all of the time, actually. Um, you know, and the the stuff that you said, like, you know, doubled the frame rate, right? Or, yeah, or whatever yeah. you said. Like we could do that now on, on a phones. relatively modern yeah. smartphone. We can mm -hmm. do that. Um, so, so yeah, I mean, another thing, um, I'm glad that I just remembered this, but one part of an album campaign I really, really like is, uh, like live streaming, listening parties, that sort of thing. That's all stuff that can be quite eventful. Like an album should be eventful. It should be an event, right? And maybe you have a pre listening party the week before or what have you. Like you could have, a listening party over a live stream, for example, uh, or like a Zoom hangout with your closest fans or whatever, make it quite intimate or whatever. And then um, and the call to action to that is pre-order the album. Because because you've got people's attention, they're in your event with them, it's a lot easier to, to you know, uh, hook that in. Um, but also, that's content. You can repurpose that after the fact as well, right? Into whatever. Yeah, a listening party with closest fans is a very good idea. And then you could record the Zoom meeting and then put that on their social media sure. or or wherever or clips. Yeah, and it's another it's another good reason to get email address, you know, build up that mailing list. It's a lot easier to organize events over email, over a mailing list or what have you. But yeah, um, I quite like that doing the live stream thing, mm. listening party. Some good tips. Yeah, I'm thinking about doing a live stream now for my, for my album launch or maybe a week before the album launch. Sure. You know, and that makes, you know, you're very much a video person. Like that makes a lot of sense for you as well. And that's, that kind of, you know, that's another thing. It's like, you, you got to, uh, you also got to play to your own strengths. Like, like some people are just, they're not as much video, but they do write. And that story that I had them write, I'm like, hey, that can just go out as a series of posts. Right, even if you're not much of a video person, and you can just attach an image to each chapter, like uh, one I had an artist do um, yesterday, it was about their friend. I'm like, okay, let's start with this first bit of the story, and and you know, it's an image of you and that friend, and you're telling the story how you met and and that sort of thing, and then there's the call to action. Um, but yeah, play to your strengths, right? Mm, going back to the the live watch party, would you have? The artist telling the story about how they wrote the songs, how it came together, or do you just kind of put visuals and just be quiet? Yeah, I mean, um, it could be that. I, that could also be its own thing. Like just before the album goes out, just drop a video on YouTube, just a quick video. Hey, um, I just wanted to drop a quick video to you because I'm really excited about uh, the launch that's happening in a few days. I just wanted to 
take take a few minutes to tell you the story of this album, tell you why this album's coming out. Um, and and yeah, and that's another opportunity to promote it. Yeah, another thing that I did uh, from your suggestion is a mix walkthrough. Yes. So I opened up yes. one of my uh, songs and I talk about how I wrote it. It wasn't actually the final version because the final version... Uh, we used a lot of outboard gear and stuff like that. So it's kind of more the the early stage of the song. And that's kind yeah. of a, a call to action to, to listen to the album as well, because it was like, this is kind of, of the course. early stage of the song. If you want to hear the final finished version, check out the song. Yeah, yeah. Well, that also makes sense because they're, they're literally hearing it. Yeah. Right. So it's going in, right? Um, one of my clients the other day, he mentioned that... Um, He's been doing that on TikTok. Like a, he'll do a quick walkthrough, like really low low tech, like just you know, phone on, pointing at the computer or whatever. Hey, I just want to share, like you know, um, the process or whatever. And people like it because people like, you know, I think especially these days they like seeing process. The process is is the thing. Um, I was talking to uh, an artist called Raven and. The way that, you know, what she does as well, like she she very much believes in that. She likes, her her fans like participating in the process of the art being created and released at the same time. Yeah, I watch a lot of uh, song deconstructions and mix walkthroughs on YouTube. Right. I, think, I think they're great. It's good if you're, if you're a producer or a songwriter, you kind of see their process and learn from that as well. Absolutely. I'm always like, oh, I want to know what synth they, oh, they use that synth, oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because as well, like, you know, many of your fans, um, I remember I was talking to someone, this label guy once, and he made a good point, and this was specific to, like, EDM artists and producers, but I do think it extrapolates beyond that. Um, and he made a good point. It's like, these DJs, these artists are, they're, they're influencers and th- people follow them because they want to be them, right? They want to, it's a lifestyle thing, you know? So when they do drop a mixed walkthrough, everyone who's there who wants to also be them is interested, you know, because they want to, I want to be that guy, you know, or that I want to be that person. Well, you, you see them playing all the music festivals and it looks great, but you don't see them EQ in the kick drum <laughs> for four hours. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You only see the fun stuff on social media. <laughs> Of course. Yeah. That's the point, isn't it, I suppose? Yeah, there's some uh, some good points here. Any uh, final thoughts for this video on uh, music no, distribution, not really. music promotion? Well, I mean, we've done, you know, I could talk about distribution for days, but, um, and we have covered that as well before, but, like, the point is, really, that, there's there isn't an off the shelf solution or strategy, right? It it has to derive it has to be derived from the art itself, right? It like that's why it comes back down to the story and whatever. It's like how should I promote this? You know, the a conversation I often have. The artist is like, Chris, how do I promote X Y Z? And my response is, What's the story behind X Y and Z? And how can we tell it to the audience? Right, the the strategy is derived from the art, and not the art being derived from the strategy. If that makes sense, yeah, yeah. But, was, but that's like a philosophy. Yeah, there's still some sense, basic yeah. principles, as you said, email marketing and yeah, telling of course. the story, yeah, putting out content, yeah. But even in that, but within that, it's like, what do you write in the emails? Isn't it? What What are they signing up for? And for some artists, I was, I was making this case to an artist yesterday, actually, because. Um, what they're doing is very much cause dri- driven, right? He, you know, he wants to help people. And, um, you know, so it, it kind of made a, a lot of sense for him. And I was like, I was like, this, this is what being an artist is about for, you know, for a lot of people, right? Is that you're buying into a cause for sure. You know, like there's so many artists that have been and gone who, you know, beyond the art that they created and including they were here for a reason for they were, they were in the world to make it a better place. Right. So it's good to, it's good to have something, you know, like a, 
It's like how some brands say that, you know, their marketing is driven by their values and that sort of thing. Your values have to be injected into it for sure. Because then, because then the people who share those values resonate with it and they are your fans. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks for joining cool. me on this video, Chris. No worries. Thank this you is for having me on. Christopher Cavallio from Unlock Your Sound. If you're interested in checking out some of Chris's work, link in the description below. And uh, yeah, my album's called Afterlife. By the time you watch this video, it should be out if you do want to have a listen. Anyway, and, so, um, so yeah, and for anyone who is interested um, in the link there, you can download some free resources to help yeah. you release your album and that sort of thing. Cool, awesome. Yeah, so uh, thanks again, Chris. Thanks for watching at you're home. Welcome. And uh, we'll talk Thank to you, you next time.